Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the brand new Seagate Ironwall 510 NVMe SSDs for NAS. What a mouthful that sentence was but about a year ago was when we first started talking about Seagate Ironwolf SSDs. First unveiled at uh, CES 2019. Since then we have seen the NAS series of SSDs from Seagate get from better to better to better to the best. It's become a kind of SSD of choice for a lot of NAS users out there complemented with the standard Seagate Ironwolf SSDs and hard drives combined together. But we always kind of knew there'd be an NVMe version. A lot of us were just sitting there going, Come on, do the th do the thing, bring them out, because it was only gonna, it was going to be a no brainer given the success of Iron Wolf One One Zero, their series of two and a half inch SSDs. We have seen lots of NAS brands produce new solutions that are multiple tiered in their internal storage media. In the last two years, in fact, the number of NASs that arrive with support for multiple media types within one environment with dedicated bays has quadrupled everything from Synology's early releases in the form of the DS918 Plus and the DS1019 and the RS1619XS. They were hard drive based NASs that also arrived with dedicated NVMe SSD slots. This meant that you could have a huge area of storage media on hard drives and a small area of SSDs to cache. And I'll talk a little bit more about the advantages in that later. But QNAP took things even further. They released NAS devices that arrived with hard drive bays and then two and a half inch SATA bays and then NVMe bays all in one solutions in their 80 series, in their 72 XT series, their 83 series. We have seen so many solutions from them that arrive with both hard drive and SSD base. So it's only natural that we saw Seagate Ironwolf's SSD range extend into NVMe support as well. So what do we know about this new series of NVMe drives? Well, an NVMe, as you know, is a teeny tiny little stick of SSD, arriving in four different capacities, ranging in 240 gig for around about 120 quid to 240, uh, sorry, 200, uh, 480 gig, and that's gonna be about 170. Uh, then there's your 960 gigabyte model, that's going to be about 320, 330, all the way up to the top end, uh, 1.92 terabytes, that's going to set you back well over half a grand, about 540, 550 quid. Um, now, these SSDs are not going to be cheap, but they shouldn't be, because the way they're made is enterprise fashion. As you've noticed, with Pro Series hard drives to enterprise level data center uh, media, the, the more enterprise something is, the more construction goes into it, and unfortunately, that affects the price. So, consequently, these uh, SSDs will be arriving with um, 3D TLC NAND, which is kind of the high-end commercial-grade uh, performance and professional um, uh, memory flash chips that you get on one of these bad boys, along with the controller that I'll talk about a little bit later on and how it compares with Fire CUDA. But... These SSDs are going to be arriving in NVMe uh, version 1.3 and support of PCIe um, uh, PCIe 3 uh, Gen 3 times 4 means that you are going to get those tremendous speeds uh, with read well in excess of 3,000 megs in traditional use. Not just you know speculative, hopeful use, but actual good use. Now. The other things that they promise with these drives are that they are 1.0 DWPD. That is one full data write per day. Now, given that these drives arrive with a five-year warranty, that is quite a bold claim. Most of the time when you see data write per day um, figures, it's always in a decimal place, and it's always normally 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.9. But very few commercial-grade SSDs that you see that you can buy on the street arrive with a full load of DWPD. What that means is you could delete and fill the, um, the NAND on this with the full capacity every day for five years in that warranty and it should operate perfectly. Along with those five years of warranty, there is also going to be two years of data recovery, which I know seems less important on an SSD, but it really isn't. Because when it comes to data recovery services, it isn't just about physical damage. I know I threw that drive down the stairs last year to prove that the Seagate data recovery service would work. But when it comes to SSDs, it's more about retrieving deleted data, deleted cache data, or deleted uh, versioned data. It's about recovering, and that on a, 
you know, forensic bit by bit level is not easy and fantastically expensive. So it's good to see that these SSDs will be arriving with two years of that service bundled in as well. Now, going back to something I mentioned earlier on, why would a person use an NVMe SSD in their NAS? In fact, why would a person use SSD in their NAS? Because let's face it, a NAS you connect with a cable at the back, the LAN cables, so you're already restricted to 100 megabytes, but it's not that simple. So the majority of NASs, when it comes to balancing the cost and what you get in terms of capacity, hard drives always won for a long time because SSDs were always super expensive. And on top of that, they didn't give you the capacity. If you took a four bay NAS and you fill it with hard drives, these days you can get up to 16 terabyte hard drives, such as the Seagate Ironwolf hard drive series. And that allows you to have an enormous amount of storage, even after a raid. But even when you raid them together and get some of the performance benefits of multiple drives being read and written to at the same time, it's still not great. And it's still not ideal in terms of speed compared with the SSD inside your OS laptop. So what do you do about that? Well, you could fully populate a NAS with SSDs. Oh, you'll get some great speeds then. But then at the same time, you're not going to get big capacities and it's going to cost you so, so much. You know, five to six times that of a hard drive. And even then, the capacities you're going to get commercially, you're not going to get greater than 4TB with a SATA connection. The result is you get smaller capacity, you get great speed, but not a lot of space to play with. And it's going to cost you an absolute fortune. SSD caching is where things are met in the middle. SSD caching allows you to create a large area of storage with hard drives, which are all rated together with their performance, and then you have two or even one, maybe even more, SSDs rated together to form as cache. And these are what uh, provide a nice buffer between you and the hard drives and frequently access files or files that need to be offloaded so other things can be dealt with, can be helped with the cache, thereby vastly improving read and write speeds between you and the NAS. On top of that, you have three tiered storage systems and more using an, something called Q-tier from QNAP or just auto tiering, where you have multiple storage layers, for example, hard drives, SATA, SSDs, SATA, and NVMe SSDs, and the system intelligently moving things around and cloning data onto areas to allow incredibly fast speeds uh, for you uh, between you and your data which cannot be sniffed at but going back to my original point why would a person care about this if they're only connected via a single LAN connection because if they're using a single RJ45 LAN cable they're only going to get like 100 110 megabytes yes that is true and there are ways to counteract that with link aggregation and using 10 GBE or 2.5 or 5 GBE these days as well as Thunderbolt NAS too but if you can improve the internal operation speed of your NAS, you can max out your connection with the device. And the minute you deal with more complex graphical um, uh, operations, such as Plex Media Server, such as virtualization, such as 4K multimedia, even with a one gigabit Ethernet connection, SSD caching will still max out that connection beautifully for you and take a lot of the load off of the rendering and the creation and the output of data from both the hard drives, the hard drive controller, and the CPU and the memory. So there's loads of benefits, even to people that utilize one gigabit ethernet. The last thing I wanna talk about is how this drive compares with the Seagate Fire CUDA 510. Cause I don't know if you've noticed, Fire CUDA 510 from Seagate is an NVMe. Seagate Iron Wall 510 is an NVMe. They're both from Seagate, they both seem near enough identical, but they're not. It's a couple of tidy little differences. One good, one bad. Bad one, they cost a little bit more. The Seagate Iron Wolf drives cost about 10 to 12% more. Why is that? A lot of that comes down to the architecture and the controller that's utilized inside. The controller inside the um, Iron Wolf, it utilizes the same Physion or Physion, I can never, P-H-I-S-O-N, um, that controller make, they've got an enterprise grade firmware and uh, NAND controller factored into the Seagate Iron Wolf series that isn't available on the Fire Cuda. And that's because these drives are going to be used in RAID environments. The Fire Cuda, although they have been used for caching, are really designed 
or um, OS systems and faster boot operations of like gaming rigs and more. Firecuda was originally the gaming brand for things like the hybrid range of drives that were hard drives that had um, SSDs built into the top of them. But traditionally, they're not really designed for large-scale RAID environment, whereas the Seagate um, Ironwolf 510 series is designed for RAID utilization because you can't use read-write caching without multiple SSDs. You need to have multiple disks being read and written to, and the bigger the operation that you're using with hard drives, such as fully populating a device with 16 TB drives, if it's an 8 bay or something crazy, two SSDs is not going to be enough for caching. Because bear in mind, you should always complement your hard drive RAID storage with about 10% SSD for caching. So if you've got an 8 bay with 16 TB drives, a couple of 4 TBs isn't going to be sufficient. And that's where you look at solutions that have multiple NVMe bays or NVMe upgrade cards. And then get that caching working in a RAID 5 environment or more. But how do you guys feel about the Seagate um, Iron Wolf 510 series? Is it a fad? Is it a gimmick? Or is this something we're legitimately waiting for? Me personally, I'm interested in anything that will improve network attached storage for both home and business. And to me, this sounds like a positive step forward in that field. But maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments what you think. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this video so I know exactly what you guys like and what you don't and I know what to make going forward. And click subscribe to stay tuned for my speed tests and NAS optimized environment demonstrations of the new SSDs from Seagate alongside their older ones as well. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Check out the NAS Compare link in the description to learn more. It's going to be constantly updated. And of course, visit the guys at span.com to get hold of your next data storage solution. I will see you next time.